cardiac emergencies. For ventricular fibrillation, defibrillate immediately if witnessed. Perform CPR before defibrillation if unwitnessed. A normal initial ECG does not rule out the possibility of acute coronary syndrome. Many patients with acute coronary syndrome present without chest pain as their primary symptom. ECG changes with hyperkalemia include peak T waves, loss of P waves, and QRS widening. Unstable patients with tachyarrhythmia, regardless of the cause, require immediate electrical cardioversion. Why QRS tachycardia? When in doubt between ventricular tachycardia and supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy, treat as ventricular tachycardia. Avoid using calcium channel blockers for wide complex tachycardias. Aortic dissection should be suspected in patients with sudden onset, tearing chest or back pain, and differential blood pressures between arms. Always consider cardiac causes in patients presenting with syncope after exertion or associated with chest pain. Myocarditis should be considered in patients with unexplained rapid heart rate, especially with viral symptoms. Respiratory emergencies. Preoxygenation with 100% oxygen is crucial during rapid sequence intubation to prevent desaturation. Pulse oximetry measures oxygenation but does not assess ventilation. Manage ventilator problems by troubleshooting displacement, obstruction, pneumothorax, and equipment failure. This is known as the DOPE, dope mnemonic. CPAP or BiPAP can often prevent the need for intubation in emergency and hospital settings. Sudden onset shortness of breath and chest pain may indicate pulmonary embolism or pneumothorax, requiring immediate evaluation. Always monitor for pulmonary edema after smoke inhalation even if the patient initially appears stable. Carbon monoxide poisoning should be suspected in smoke inhalation victims, requiring high-flow oxygen treatment. Ketamine is an ideal sedative for pediatric patients as it provides pain relief, amnesia, and airway protection. Gastrointestinal emergencies. Mesenteric ischemia should be suspected if abdominal pain is disproportionately severe compared to physical findings. In patients with atrial fibrillation who develop abdominal pain, suspect mesenteric ischemia. Consider non-gastrointestinal causes of nausea and vomiting, such as cardiac, neurologic, or metabolic issues. A ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm should be considered in patients with abdominal pain, a pulsating mass, and hypotension. Bilious vomiting in neonates is a surgical emergency until proven otherwise. For non-severe cases of Clostridium difficile infection, treat with oral metronidazole. For severe cases, use oral vancomycin, with options like intravenous metronidazole vancomycin enema, or fecal transplant as alternatives. High fiber intake is protective against diverticular complications, especially from fruits and cereals. Conversely, red meat and Western diets increase the risk of diverticulitis. These three physical exam findings are classically seen in severe necrotizing pancreatitis. Cullen sign, Gray Turner sign, and erythematous skin nodules due to fat necrosis. Common precipitants of hepatic encephalopathy include infection, diuretic therapy or hypovolemia, gastrointestinal bleeding, renal failure, and constipation. Trauma and burns. 
Assume all unconscious trauma patients have cervical spine injuries until proven otherwise through imaging. Hypotension in trauma patients should be treated as hemorrhage until proven otherwise. Exposure. Every trauma patient should be undressed and thoroughly examined, front and back, to avoid missing injuries. Blunt trauma to the abdomen can result in significant internal bleeding, even with minimal external signs of injury. Delayed symptoms and blunt abdominal trauma may indicate a hollow viscous injury, requiring further evaluation. Splenectomy patients are at lifelong risk for overwhelming post-splenectomy infection, OPSI, and require immediate attention if febrile. Lightning strikes often cause cardiac arrest without external injury signs, requiring immediate resuscitation. Patients with extensive burns need early aggressive fluid resuscitation to prevent shock. Maintain normothermia in trauma patients to prevent coagulopathy and worsening shock. Crush injuries carry a risk of compartment syndrome and rhabdomyolysis, requiring early detection and management. Pediatric trauma patients are more prone to hypothermia and need special care to maintain body temperature. Penetrating trauma to the chest or abdomen requires immediate exploration for internal injury and bleeding. Suspect aortic injury and deceleration injuries, especially in motor vehicle accidents, which can impair respiratory function. Pulmonary edema can develop after near-drowning incidents, even after initial recovery. Reversible causes of traumatic cardiac arrests include bleeding, tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, cervical cord injury, and intracranial hemorrhage. Excessive crystalloid administration can be harmful in trauma patients with shock. Consider implementing a massive transfusion protocol for patients with significant blood loss. Needle decompression is less effective than finger thoracostomy to relieve tension pneumothorax in cases of traumatic cardiac arrest. The first step in the management of open pneumothorax is to place an occlusive dressing that is open on one side over the wound. The best guide for adequate fluid resuscitation in burn management is adequate urinary output. AED is less effective in trauma patients because the most common cardiac rhythm in traumatic cardiac arrest is pulseless electrical activity, PEA. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.